so with synuclein accumulation, people have been looking in the spinal fluid to see if you can uh, measure synuclein, and that is measurable. And on average, in studies that have been published, it is, it's a little lower on average in the cerebrospinal fluid of people who have Parkinson's and dementia with Lewy bodies, but the, the amount of overlap between the groups and controls is, is pretty substantial, so it, it's hard to use it as a, a definite biomarker. The reason it probably goes down is that as the protein accumulates inside cells, um, it probably gets sequestered so it doesn't come out of the cell as much. It's kind of like what happens with um, amyloid, in, amyloid beta in Alzheimer's disease when it builds up the main constituent of that, um, of those plaques, is, is a form of the amyloid peptide called A-beta-42. And that's free floating around in our blood, in our cerebrospinal fluid. And when it aggregates, it gets sequestered into the plaques. And so it, in Alzheimer's disease, it goes down substantially. And so you can pretty much tell who has amyloid in the brain or not from just a cerebrospinal fluid test. Now there's blood tests being developed. But with, unfortunately, with the synucleinopathies, we're not sure why, but the, this biochemical change isn't as robust. So what a lot of people are trying to do now is develop imaging agents where you can take uh, some sort of a small molecule, radiolabel it, and have it bind to the synuclein in the brain and then image it with a PET scan. That's not yet been definitively um, shown to work yet, but that's what a lot of groups are trying to uh, uh, see if they can get to work.